So um, we are in solidarity with the peasant movement and broader social justice movement in the struggle against WTO neoliberal policies and the call for economic justice. We have worked with La Via Campesina on several occasions and um, also uh, um, with many of the partners present in this call, um, especially during the anti-WTO campaign in Hong Kong and um, the video shown has brought back a lot of memories as Joseph has mentioned um, we were part of the daily solidarity movement the rallies every day um, um, with the migrant workers organizations in Hong Kong I was also in Hong Kong and it brought back a lot of memories after seeing the videos um, today I am asked to give the solidarity message from the migrant movement and also to share MFA's campaign on justice for wage theft. Thank you again for inviting us to be a part of this program. Um, so neoliberal economic policies and the WTO are among the major causes of unemployment, lack of decent work, failed rural economies, huge debt burden, trade and investment imbalances, and the removal reduction in social services in many countries. The impacts of these policies are among the root causes and drivers of labor migration. Um, I will also share now the context of the migrant workers during the COVID-19 pandemic and um, um, some of our work on the Justice for Wage Theft campaign. The ILO estimates that the economic crisis caused by COVID-19 pandemic is expected to contribute to global unemployment of more than 200 million people. These figures include migrant workers across the globe. The pandemic has severely impacted millions of migrant workers in destination countries, many of whom have experienced job loss or non-payment of wages. 
have been forced by employers to take unpaid leave or reduced wages, been confined in poor living conditions, and with little or no engagement in the work options before them. Upon arrival at home, many of the migrant workers receive little to no support from their government. With the economic crisis brought about by the pandemic, they are unable to find new jobs at home. Just on um, some figures, the Philippines alone, more than a million migrant workers have been sent home during the pandemic. Same in India, I think around 1.5 million or more have been sent home um, during the pandemic. On June 1st and July 9th, 2020, a large coalition of civil society organizations and trade unions launched two urgent calls for a justice mechanism to address the situation of migrant workers who have been repatriated without being given an opportunity to lodge claim for their dues, wages, and other benefits. The Justice for Wage Theft campaign call on governments to take immediate action to establish a transitional justice mechanism addressing wage-related grievances, claims, and labor disputes of repatriated workers who have lost their jobs or who have been sent on forced and paid leave as a result of the pandemic. As economies open up, states and banks extend helplines and bailout packages to businesses. However, these schemes have rarely or if ever included migrant workers or workers in general as beneficiaries. The existing neoliberal economic policies that favor business over workers means that migrants, workers in general, and their families, many part of the peasant communities, will be left behind in the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. There is a need to make governments and businesses accountable and ensure that migrants who are victims of wage theft, migrants who have for many years served as backbones of economies, of countries of destination receive what is owed to them. As things go back to the new normal, we cannot turn a blind eye to the issue of wage theft against migrants. Millions of dollars are lost in potential remittances due to wage theft, even as countries of origin continue to explore new markets for deployment of migrant workers, while countries of destination thrive on cheap and exploitable migrant labor. We are one with the peasant movement in calling for economic justice for all. As we build back better post-pandemic, we cannot go back to flawed economic systems that enables exploitation of workers, peasant farmers, indigenous peoples, rural women, and many others. Thank you again for the opportunity to be part of this program, for um, inviting us, and we are in solidarity with La Via Campesina and the broader uh, movement calling for to end the WTO. Thank you. Bonjour, je m'appelle Claude. Je fais des légumes en France et je les vends à côté de chez moi. Comme la plupart des paysans, je vends mes, ma production dans un rayon assez proche de mon domicile. C'est seulement 30%, 20% même, de la production mondiale qui arrive sur le commerce international. Pourtant, ces 20% imposent des règles à tout le monde par le biais de l'Organisation mondiale du commerce. Nous nourrissons, nous les paysans, nous nourrissons la population, mais vous, nous refusons de nourrir le négoce et l'agrobusiness. L'OMC est basé sur un principe économique qui voudrait que plus il y ait d'échanges, plus il y ait de croissance et plus il y ait de richesse. C'est tout le contraire qui se passe. Pour faciliter les échanges, tous les obstacles sont bannis. Les obstacles, ce sont les droits de douane. Donc il y a eu une guerre, une guerre contre les, généralisée contre les droits de douane. Il faut savoir que, par exemple, en Europe, 50% de la pro production de fruits et légumes sont importés. En Europe également, il est pratiquement impossible d'acheter des fleurs qui sont produites sur le territoire européen. Elles viennent d'Afrique et d'Amérique latine, où la main-d'œuvre n'est pas payée. 
De la même manière, en Europe toujours, les fruits et légumes sont souvent produits par des migrants qui sont payés ou très, qui sont très mal payés, avec des législations qui n'ont rien à voir avec nos législations européennes ni avec le droit du travail. Et c'est un vrai scandale, c'est un esclavage moderne organisé. Pour satisfaire à ces règles et dictées par l'OMC, il est désormais interdit de subventionner certaines productions plutôt que d'autres. Donc nous avions une politique agricole commune qui subventionnait fortement les céréales et assez peu, par exemple, d'autres productions. Pour satisfaire à l'OMC, cette politique agricole commune est devenue OMC compatible et du coup, les subventions, parce qu'il fallait garder des subventions, parce qu'il fallait garder des paysans, ont été basées non pas sur les productions, mais sur l'hectare, sur le foncier. Ce qui fait que certaines parcelles valent un prix d'or et qu'il est encore plus difficile pour des jeunes aujourd'hui de s'installer qu'il y, qu y a une vingtaine d'années. Cette règle de l'OMC, par contre, euh, a été largement, euh, euh, largement euh, endiguée, enfin, ouais. <rire> Cette règle de l'OMC a été largement biaisée par euh, l'Union européenne qui, qui euh, subventionne, qui continue de subventionner des productions qui arrivent sur le marché mondial à un prix dérisoire. C'est la subvention qui fait le revenu des paysans. Mais ces prix très bas empêchent d'autres pays, par exemple les pays d'Afrique, les pays du Sud, de démarrer une production agricole parce qu'eux ne peuvent pas produire dans ces tarifs-là. Et c'est largement, c'est quand même une honte. Okay, well, I'm uh, Sidi Otieno uh, from Kenya. I'm a smallholder food producer and a member of the Kenya Peasant League. which is a social movement bringing together smallholder food producers and consumers. Uh, we are aware that uh, the, the WTO will be holding the 12th Ministerial Conference towards the end of this year. Uh, and you know, uh, as farmers, uh, we are aware that such conferences are not going to help us because WTO has been advancing policies Uh, that are detrimental to the livelihood of the farmers. For example, if you look at the issues of free trade areas or agreements that are being advanced by WTO, you find that uh, these free trade areas are really affecting farmers in Kenya because it leads to dumping of cheap food, meaning that now our farmers cannot get market for their food products. We are seeing local, we are seeing local companies uh, like Mumia Sugar Company has collapsed because of cheap import of sugar uh, due to the free trade agreements that have been signed uh, by Kenya. You, we also have an example of the UK-Kenya free trade agreement and you find that the UK-Kenya free trade agreement is very detrimental because it's killing our farmers. Uh, the UK-Kenya FTA is, is proposing or uh, is allowing importation of chemical pesticides and herbicides that have been banned in UK, uh, chemical fertilizers, dumping of cheap foods in the, in, into Kenya. And such uh, agreements are killing our farmers because you find that now our farmers are forced to use chemical fertilizers which are making them sick and even killing them. Again, you find that WTO, uh, through the agreements on agriculture, where uh, it, it prohibits, uh, I mean, uh, subsidies to our farmers, you find that now our farmers are, are, are forced to fend for themselves And when other countries are bringing food into Kenya, for example, you find that the cost of our food becomes expensive and therefore they cannot get market in the local market. And again, the issues like, for example, the intellectual property regimes that are being uh, pushed by WTO, which leads to patents of seed, uh, patents of our indigenous crops and plants. Again, that one criminalizes our farmers from using their own seeds, from planting uh, crops, that they have uh, saved for generations and generations. Again, um, issues of uh, investments, where you find that uh, uh, calling, uh, WTO calling on large-scale investments 
uh, which lead, leads uh, to eviction of communities uh, under the guise of, uh, like you, you find there are people being evicted from forests, uh, people being evicted uh, from waterfronts. So those policies are killing our farmers. But again, the farmers are not actually taking it lying down because the farmers are already saving seeds so that they can, they can have their own seeds. Thank you everybody for this very rich uh, 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 meeting and the programs. I, when I was studying in the 1990s, the Uruguay round was going on, then WTO came in, then I am part and parcel of this struggle. And as a farmer, as a farmer's uh, movement person, and uh, also as a fellow farmer with others, how they are suffering, I'm able to understand this. Cheaper imports are coming in, and what was promised that uh, uh, the farmers can export their produces uh, to, to other countries, so that uh, farming will be very, uh, uh, very, very uh, profitable, so Indian farmers can access the market in Europe. All those things were told me. And what is happening now? And we are at the receiving end of the imports from different parts of the world. And in 1990s, uh, if you look at uh, edible oil production in India, we were almost self-sufficient. Very small amount was imported. Now, India is importing more than 60, 70% of the edible oil uh, for its domestic consumption. Everything is imported. Sugar is imported, oil is imported, pulses imported, all uh, uh, to a uh, very large amount of imports happening. And now there's a lot of pressures by the countries like uh, Brazil, Canada, Australia in the WTO to, to discontinue uh, the price mechanism for the sugarcane farmers in India. All that happening, the India, Canada, Australia summit between the prime ministers of India and Australia, and they were relaxing the import duty on pulses. So this is ultimately helping the farmers of the other countries, uh, obviously developed countries uh, to export their producers to India and not from India. Many farmers uh, here, the fisheries, uh, from the fishery sector, farming sector, uh, from Europe, from, from Africa, uh, from Korea, everywhere farmers were telling the same stories. These stories are unfolding for the last 27 years. One of the largest uh, uh, food security scheme in India is under threat from the WTO. We have been fighting this. I, I was in Bali, I was in Nairobi, I was in, in Buenos Aires. Everywhere we were uh, fighting from India uh, to different this particular uh, program. Not only for India, it is for the whole world and different countries are having this program. So it is obviously clear that WTO is not really helping the small farmers either in the developed country or in the developing countries. WTO is playing very destructive role. Uh, it, it destroys the local production. It destroys the market. It, it destroys the production pattern in each country. And intellectual property rights, Trade related intellectual property rights, which has resulted in increase of the input costs and newer molecules manufactured by the by the transnational corporations are having longer term uh, intellectual property protection, and the prices are exuberantly fixed by those corporations, which. Uh, results in draining the resources from the small and marginal farmers who are depending on those inputs. Seeds, the control over the 
a corporate control over the seeds uh, facilitated by the WTO is also draining the resources from the uh, small farmers. Not only draining the resources, it also resulting in the dependency uh, of the farmers on those corporations. Since from the beginning, I have my experiences uh, of struggle in the streets by the time of the Uruguay, end of the Uruguay round, the John Arthur Dunkel's draft was circulated to the countries by the time we were opposing and we demanded government of India uh, should not be uh, joining uh, GATT uh, by the end of the uh, Uruguay round. And we have all been raising slogans against uh, trade related intellectual property rights and all that we expected what destruction would, would happen that time is exactly happening here. And our tall farmers leader from Korea who killed himself in Concord. In India, farmers, more than 350,000 farmers killed themselves. Most of them do not even know why they are killing themselves. It is exactly WTO and its policies killed them. And it has brought, it has made the rural India as the graveyard of uh, the farmer suicides. It is because of the WTO policies. But there is no point still uh, thinking of whether something good will be delivered out of WTO. It's, it's very irrational expectation from WTO. Salmali so asked uh, a question that should we have a newer strategies? And some people were asked uh, uh, questions about uh, uh, what alternatives there. If you look at free trade agreements, there is no discipline uh, uh, about subsidies in the free trade agreement. It is more aggressive and more disastrous than the WTO policy, which doesn't mean that WTO can be better uh, in the place of uh, free trade agreements. And we as small farmers, and we are realizing the danger from this institution. And this is a very strict institution, merciless institution, which wants to exercise uh, the rules on the belly of the uh, small and marginal people. And it is making the forest, it is making the ocean and land. There's no place for the forest dwellers, fishers, and the farmers. So why should we think of reforming the WTO? So it is time and again, we need to reiterate that down, down WTO. Agriculture at least should not be part of WTO. And there were times that we were thinking that Committee on Food Security, uh, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, UNTAR, this kind of United Nations organizations can be better place for the farmers, for their policies. But still I feel, I feel that uh, places like CFS can play uh, a better role in safeguarding the, uh, the, the interest of the small and marginal people. But there also, and these all institutions are uh, subject to the WTO. And whatever the policies coming out of these organizations, I mean, uh, UN organizations are uh, subject to the WTO agreements. So WTO is the most dangerous organization the world ever created. And free trade agreements are uh, also in the same line. And I believe, I personally always believe that is my, my, my motivation. Uh, I, I'm going to end, uh, Joseph, is that until there is injustice and there should be resistance. In the streets of Delhi, farmers are flooded and the legislations were brought, but the farmers were not uh, holding the uh, play card that we are fighting the WTO, but exactly 
my fellow farmers in delhi are fighting against the wto all these farm laws are outcome of the wto and free trade new liberal thinking those people like ashok kulati and others who are advisors to the government they are exactly supporting the wto policies liberalization policies and i have read uh, professor ashok kulati's uh, write ups that he is advocating against quantitative restrictions so the quantitative restrictions were removed by the wto and imports are dumped into the country and even without wto proactively governments in my own government has brought down the uh, import taxes sometimes to zero to import palm oil for example in the name of food security but the governments of the world civil societies farmers should work together and and i i re, i remember the the present government uh, its organization was some of the people who were uh, the, the the forefathers of this uh, present ruling political party in india they were against wto by the time the uruguay round uh, we were in the streets they were uh, talking about swadeshi which means self reliance and local production and all our prime minister uh, narendra modi during the pandemic said vocal for local what a fantastic phrase i support that that phrase vocal for local but it should reflect in the policy outcome it should reflect in the governance it should reflect in the in the legislations unfortunately that is not happening there is mismatch between word and deed of the political people who have occupied the the the, the government in different countries sometimes before they were our people they were talking they were supporting farmers when farmers were in the streets but when the same people come to power the same farmers who are in the streets they are telling them like they are anti nationals they are terrorist elements they are anti development like that it should not happen the courageous fight of indian farmers has made the government of india the mighty government to roll back its three farm laws and that that is outcome of the fight uncompromised yeah. uncompromised fight and my appeal to the uh, to the fellow we are campesina people our allies and everybody in the world that we might not be able to give a very clear cut solution to all the problems brought by those people and but we will continue to resist the disastrous policies disastrous design ill engineered the the programs to to enslave the small and marginal people the millions the wailing multitudes of the world we will stand up we will continue our fight until there is injustice our fight is permanent thank you very much